What's happening, Booth Junkies? This is Mike Delgadio, and this is our next installment of the Reaper for VoiceOver series. In this video, we're going to cover getting Reaper configured to be the ultimate voiceover machine. We're going to cover all the presets you need to get Reaper configured so you can be a very productive, very efficient voice actor. Like many voice actors, we often work without an engineer on the other side of the glass. So we need to be able to work quickly, efficiently, and we need to be able to deliver professional quality results. That requires some technical skill in addition to our acting ability. But the idea here is that when I'm in the booth, I want to concentrate on my acting, not on the technology. I want the tech to work with me and not get in my way. Ideally, the tech itself should anticipate what I need, do what it can automatically, and only show me what I need to do the job, not clutter everything up with anything extraneous. The beautiful thing about Reaper is that it's highly customizable, so we can do exactly that. After getting familiar with how Reaper works, you shall become one with your DAW, and you'll probably wonder how you got work done any other way. Now we're going to go through a lot of settings, and I don't want you to be intimidated. Take your time, and I'll hold your hand the whole way through. Oh, and this is important. Stick with me until the end, because some of this stuff won't stick until you take one critical step at the end that I'll show you. Okay, first things first. Let's pick some of the low-hanging fruit. Let's get rid of some of this user interface stuff that really only applies to music production. Reaper has a grid that helps musicians know where beats and measures are, but we don't need that stuff, so let's get rid of it. So, first, let's change the ruler at the top to only show us the elapsed time. Right-click the time ruler, then change the time unit to minutes, seconds. Now the time at the top changes to what we want, not what a musician wants. Easy. Now let's turn off the snapping and the grid lines. To do that, we click the Option menu, then scroll down to Snap Grid, and then uncheck Enable Snapping. Then do it again. Click Option, then Snap Grid, and this time uncheck Show Grid. There. Now we can freely select precisely with our mouse anywhere on the timeline and not worry about jumping to some grid. While we're talking about this music stuff, down here, let's right-click near the time signature and uncheck Show Time Signature. Let's also uncheck Show Play Rate Control. Unfortunately, for some reason, you cannot hide the Beats Per Minute indicator. I wish you could. I think it might be the only thing in Reaper you can't change. All right, cool. We're off to a pretty good start. Let's now create a toolbar that only contains the things that we need as a voice artist. That default toolbar has things for music and projects and functions we probably will never use. So let's make a simpler one that only contains what we need. First, let's give ourselves some room by dragging the right side of the toolbar, then click right in that blank area that we just created. When we right-click, if we choose Switch Toolbar, we can see that there's lots of toolbars that we can customize. Let's choose Toolbar 1. See how that replaces the buttons with this new toolbar that only has one button? Let's put the buttons we want in here. That first button says Edit Me. If you click it, it brings up the Toolbar Editor. You can also get back here anytime by right-clicking on the toolbar and choosing Customize Toolbar. First, let's retitle this toolbar as voiceover toolbar. That first item that says edit me, we can get rid of that now, so let's select it and then click remove. Now there are two items that I use regularly. You may want others, but I'll show you how to add two. The first one we use all the time is ripple editing. So let's find a button for that. So right down here we click the add button to start adding actions to our toolbar. As you can see, there are lots and lots of actions, so let's first click up in the Filter field and type Ripple. And the one we want is Cycle Ripple Editing Modes. So we'll click that option and then click Select to add it to the toolbar. The next button is one to re-render a file after an edit, using the same settings as the last time we rendered. Sometimes when you render and then listen back to that final, you need to make a change to render it again, so I like that shortcut. So let's click Add and then in the Filter field, enter Render, and you'll see the option for Render Project Using the Most Recent Settings. Click Select to add that to the toolbar. Those are the two actions we want, so we can close this window. Now when we look at the toolbar, we see that Ripple got an icon, but Render did not. 
Fortunately, you can add an icon in place of the words by clicking the item, then the icon button, then change icon. That brings us up a great big list of icons. To see if one matches what you're looking for, you can type a few characters here in the filter field for the action that you're trying to represent. I want to render, so I'll type render. And I can see this one that is labeled as render disk mono. I like that icon. So let's use that by clicking that icon, which will then apply it to our toolbar. Now we can close the icon picker and see the toolbar. That looks pretty good. In the list, you can drag the items to rearrange the order of items in the toolbar. And if you want a spacer in between any of those icons, click Add, and then in the filter, type No Action, and then Select. Drag that between any two items that you want to get a little extra space. All right, cool. Now let's click Save. You can also add other items for things that you go to the menus for a lot, or for any custom action that you create for yourself. I have a video that shows a couple of custom actions that I use pretty frequently. I'll add a link in the description to that video for anyone interested. Now, when we record, each individual recording on your track is called a media item, and you can do stuff to specific items, not just the entire track. So let's turn on buttons that appear above each item so we can get to those options quickly. To see this in action, first I'll add a track, then arm it, and record a few seconds worth. Now we add the buttons in Reaper's Preferences section. Go to Reaper, then Preferences. Now remember on Windows, this is Options, then Preferences. Then scroll to the left side of the window to Appearance, then Media. Then look for the Media Item buttons. See how the buttons are only checked if the action is active and not if it's the opposite? Well, we want the buttons to be there no matter what the state. So select all of the buttons, and for me, except for notes. I find that I never add notes to items. So unless you find that you need to add notes to particular items regularly, then uncheck those too. Click Apply, and you should now see little buttons appear above every item. See how there are those little buttons above? Now we can mute a specific item, or click Effects to add effects to just that item. That makes editing a lot easier. Excellent. Let's move on. All right, now let's work on the layout of the screen in a way that I think works a lot better for voiceover. You see at the bottom, below the tracks, this window with a mixer? Well, that's called the Docker. If you don't have it on screen, you can get it with the View menu, then Docker. If you don't like where it is, you can actually drag this Docker to any edge of Reaper's window. Just click and hold in this gray area at the bottom and drag to a new edge. See how that edge highlights? When you get to the edge you want, just release and the Docker will drop there. Personally, I do like to have the tracks at the top and the mixer at the bottom but with some additional stuff. Since we use effects all the time, I want to see them. So I'll go up to the View menu and then choose FX Browser. See how that gets added down as a tab next to the mixer? Well, you can click between these two tabs to bring either one of them up. In fact, if you want to see both all the time, you can actually do that too. Just grab one of the tabs and drag it to another edge. You see that? You can have more than one docker. Now, personally, I like to have the FX browser and the mixer split on the bottom of the Docker. So, let's drag that mixer tab to the right side of the bottom Docker. We should see just the right side of the Docker light up, and then we can drop the mixer there. Now, once you have them both in place, you can adjust the width of each pane in the Docker by dragging back and forth here. Now, having the mixer at the bottom is cool. But there's one special mixer item called the master track, and that's the first one. I like to have that one nice and big on the screen, because that's where our output levels are, and we need to make sure we know exactly where our output levels are at the end. So right-click in the mixer, and the top choice of the menu is master track. Highlight that, and then go to show in a separate window. That gives us a separate window just for the master track. Now here's the trick. Click that gear then Master Track, then Show in Docker. That puts the Master Track in its own Docker tab, which allows us to drag the Master Track to the right side. Now it's broken off and separate from the Track Mixer. Now the top of this Master Track panel is for the list of FX, but I almost never add FX to the Master Track, so I don't need to see that. So let's drag from the top of the Mixer section and collapse out those FX slots. 
Now, this gives us a great, big, beautiful meter to monitor our output. Make sure we don't clip. Make sure all of our levels are great. Perfect. So now we can come over to our FX browser, and we can drag an effect from our FX browser directly onto the mixer for the track we want to apply it to, or we can drag it up onto the track that we want to apply it to, and that will apply the FX to the whole track. Or we can even drag an effect onto a specific item. In this case, the effect will only apply to that specific item. That is awesome. All right, now that we have our screen layout perfect, let's save it. To save our screen layout, we go to the View menu, then choose Screen Sets Layouts, and then select the first slot here and click Save. It'll ask you for a name, so let's call this VoiceOver Layout. Now, even if you mess up your window layout, you can change back to it instantly by pressing F7 on your keyboard. And if you improve this as you customize it for your own needs, Shift F7 will update that screen set. That's cool. Now, if you see here, we can have multiple screen sets. So this allows you to have different screen sets for different kinds of projects. So I actually have a separate screen set for recording as I have for editing, since they're slightly different. And then I have another screen set for video editing. Yes, Reaper can edit videos. And then I also have one for music production. So with just a key press, I can switch back and forth between layouts, even in the same project. That is cool. All right, sweet. Now that we have the screen layout perfect, let's talk about getting our tracks perfected for voiceover. As you record more and more, you'll probably find that you add the same effects over and over again. And you probably end up setting the effects the same way over and over and over again. So once you get an effect dialed in, you can set it as a preset and then get back there whenever you want. So let's go up to our track and drag three effects from our FX browser onto the first track to form a chain. I'll drag Regate for a noise gate. Next, I'll drag Recomp for a compressor. And then I'll drag Re-EQ for an equalizer. Now go to each one of these and make adjustments to match your own needs. So I'll dial mine in the way that I usually use them. Then I'll click the plus next to each effect to save it as a preset. If you think that it's perfect, you can also save it as a default preset. So that whenever you add that effect to your track, it's always applied that same way. So first I'll choose the gate. Then I'll make some adjustments that I know work for my booth and for my room. Once I have it just right, I'll click that plus icon and save the preset to give this a name. I'll call this VoiceOver Gate. If it's good, I can also click the plus sign again to save that preset as a default. This means whenever I drag a gate onto a track or an item, it'll use these settings. Okay, so let's do the same for the EQ. I'll click EQ, then I'll make the adjustments I know work for my microphone and my voice. I'll roll off a little bass. I demud the mid bass at about 250 hertz. I add a slight de-essing dip around 5400 hertz. Now I'll click the plus and then save the preset as voiceover EQ. Then since I know this works for me, I'll add it as the default for this effect. Finally, the compressor. I'll click that, then make my adjustments. Now I'm not spending a ton of time showing you these presets because they'll probably be different for your voice, your mic, and your booth. This is a good place for me to start, and then I can tweak it as needed. I'll click plus, then save the preset as voiceover compression, then save it as a default. Now I find that if I'm recording voice, these three effects are nearly always applied in the same way, in the same order, every single time as a chain. It goes into the gate, then the EQ, and then the compressor. So let's drag the effects around to get the proper order of the chain. Gate at the top, EQ in the middle, compressor at the bottom. And now that these are set up perfectly, we can also save this chain as the chain we always want to use for a voiceover track. So in the sidebar here, right click and choose FX Chains, then Save All FX as a Chain, then give this chain a name. And as the pillar of originality I am, you can guess what I'll call it. Yep, voiceover chain. And again, you can make this the default chain for every track if you only do voiceover. Now that we have the chain set up, 
Let's also set up the way we want a track to look whenever we add it to a project. Let's adjust the track height. Put your cursor here at the bottom edge of the track and drag that track height so you can see all the options. Now you may want your mic to automatically be armed when you have this track selected. If so, right click the track and choose Automatic Record Arm when selected. This way, even if you have multiple tracks, you only record onto the one that is active. Now confirm that you have your chain on the track in the order that you want them with the presets you want. So we'll just click the FX button and look through them. Now I commonly use the pre-FX volume when I edit, so I like to have that envelope visible also. Now I do this by right-clicking the track, then envelopes, then pre-FX volume visible. Now I use this mostly for automation and fixing things, and I have another video on automation and one on custom actions that show how I use this automation. But the short version is that this is great for fixing breaths, mouth noises, minor flaws, and moments when you get a click from the gate opening and closing. So sometimes you need to raise or lower the volume just in a very specific area to fix a minor flaw, take out a breath or add something back in. Now down here on the mixer, I also like to have the FX visible next to the meter so I can see all of the effects that have been applied and I can see any chains that are there. So right click on the track or the mixer and choose a mixer layout. Personally, I like this one called BB Small Sidebar, but you can choose whichever you like. You know, browse through them and see which looks good to you. See how that lists your current FX chain? Now I can drag from the FX browser right onto the chain in the specific spot for that track. That's cool. You can also alter the track panel layout in the same way. I personally prefer this global layout that comes with Reaper by default, just as long as the track height shows me all the buttons. Now right-click on the track and click Save Track as Track Template. Name the track Default VoiceOver Track. Okay, now, this is the moment of truth. Remember when I said some of this stuff doesn't become permanent until you take one critical step? Well, we've saved all the little bits and pieces, and now we want to put it all together in one big perfect layout, and this is where we're going to take that step. So click File, then Project Settings, and under the Project Settings tab, if you'll be mostly doing voiceover, then you'll probably choose a sample rate of 44,100. If you'll be mostly doing video, like for a YouTube channel, then check your camera's sample rate. It may be 48,000. Also, to keep your files organized, you should go to the Media tab here and enter a name for your recorded items. Puts them all together in a folder. I just call mine Media. Also, by default, just check to make sure that you're saving at a high quality. I keep my default recording settings at WAVE, 24-bit PCM, and I usually include markers and regions. Now, if you've never used markers or regions, check out my video on them, or if you need to deliver multiple files, like for recording and rendering an audiobook. Okay, so our project settings are set. Now, here is the most important thing to do. Set your cursor back to zero, delete any items you may have on your tracks, make sure you have your first track set exactly the way you want it, with the FX, with the chain, look things over, and make sure they're just the way you want them. Looking good? They are to me. So this is the magic step right here. Go to File, then Project Templates, then Save Project Settings as Template. Give this the name VoiceOver Template. This encapsulates everything into one template file that memorizes all of the settings. Now you can always start a new VoiceOver session by loading this template and it will be exactly the way you want it. Tons of stuff will be done automatically for you. Now, I load this by default every time I start a new Reaper project since 90% of my work is VoiceOver. So let's go back to Reaper Preferences. We click Reaper, then Preferences. Remember on Windows, it's Options, then Preferences. Go to Project, and then right at the top of this section, choose the template you just created as a default. Click Apply, and lock that in. All right, so now let's check out our work. We'll restart Reaper. 
and we should see by default that our project has opened exactly as we want it. Look at this, this is great. We've got no grid, we're not snapping, we see just our toolbar, we see everything that just applies to our project. Fantastic. We have now converted Reaper into the ultimate voiceover machine. If you have any questions about what we did here in this video, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Uh, while we're here, why don't you also click subscribe. I do lots of videos about voiceover, getting your home studio set up, about Reaper. So if you subscribe, you'll get notified whenever I add a new video. Thanks for watching.